Welcome to my workshop. You are watching Casual DIY channel. In today's video, I'm going to be upgrading my flip top workbench. So check out the details what I'm planning to do. One of the features that my workbench is missing is the ability to clamp larger sheets of uh, material in vertical position. So for example, if I'm building a carcass and I want to use dowel joinery as this is my preferred method to actually uh, put cabinets together, I do have a problem of, you know, how to position my board that it's nice and stable and to pre-drill the holes for the dowels. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering a solution that hopefully will allow me to clamp the workpiece steadily and at a certain height that is comfortable for me to actually drill the holes in it for my dowel joinery. And hopefully the solution I'm going to create today is somewhat possible for you to make and attach to your workbench as well. So let's get started. First of all, as you can see, I'm using my miter saw to rip down a piece of pine. It's four and a half centimeters by four centimeters and the length of it needs to be, in my case, 87 and a half centimeters. That's exactly the space I've got in the middle section of my workbench. Okay, I have marked each end of this board where I'm going to pre-drill a hole to accommodate this dowel. I've actually made this dowel myself on a router table. If you want to find out how to make your own custom um, dowels, I've got a link for you for my video so you can go and have a look and check it out. This particular dowel is 25 millimeters in diameter. Hence, I'm going to be using 25 millimeter forcing a bit to create a um, hole for this dowel to go inside. Now I'm not going to go through the whole board, that's why I've marked how deep I need to go with this uh, masking tape and after that I'm going to cut this to the right size, glue it in place and drive a screw from the back to make sure it stays in place in this board. Now with a four millimeter drill bit, I'm gonna drill a hole through the remaining part of the board. That will give me two things. One, I'm gonna use that pre-drilled hole for a screw. Now I'm gonna drive in from um, the other side, from the back to hold the dowel in place. And secondly, I'm gonna use that hole to mark my position of this board onto uh, my workbench. So the holes, for the dowels are in the correct places on my workbench. I'm using a small level to make sure I'm in the right place. Now I can clamp this to my workbench. I can now pre-drill the hole and basically mark the position of the first hole onto my workbench. I've got the mark there. And now I can use my 25 millimeter force a bit to make the hole for the dowels. And I'm going to carry on with this process until I get a full set of holes, all the levels I want for this project. With all the holes pre-drilled in my workbench, it's now time to sort out the dowel in our pine board. Now with my bandsaw, I'm just cutting the dowels to the correct sizes, but obviously if you don't have a bandsaw, a normal handsaw will do. And now it's time to install the dowels. Okay, let's test the fit and see how it all works. Absolutely perfect. I've got now a stable position here for a, for example, this chipboard. I want to add some dowels to it. But now I need to think of a way to actually clamp this to my workbench and making sure it's nice and secure. Okay, so at the front here, we need to have some sort of a solution. So I'm actually thinking of adding a T-track just over here at the front of the body of my workbench. That will give me the ability to add some clamps to it and secure my work. Uh, I'm going to use a router to create a channel for that. And um, yeah, quite easy to do. Let's get to it. So I need to create a channel for the T-track that's just going to go like so. 
And to do that, I'm gonna be using my router with a straight cutting bit. Now I do need some sort of a straight edge to guide my router against. So what I'm gonna do, as it is just my workbench, I'm basically gonna screw this D-track down and create an edge that my router can follow. And now it's time to install the T-Track itself. As you can see, it's actually a little bit shorter. That will give me the ability to add a T-bolt just through here without any struggle. Okay, let's test out the whole setup, shall we? Nice and stable position of the board itself, support at the bottom. Let's drill some holes. And as you can see, such a simple solution, but it works great. If you have the ability to have this set up on your workbench, I fully recommend this. Now, I cannot afford a domino for my joinery. So for me, dowel joinery is the way to go, especially with a cheap <laughs> jig like this one that actually does the job pretty well. However, I did invest a little bit of money and I've bought a better jig, but uh, that's for a future video. So going forward, my main method of joinery of cabinets, carcasses and everything like that will be dowels. It's cheap, it's easy to do with a special jig and obviously all the support you need. And it's really strong method of joining boards together. So yes, a lot of projects in the future coming with this method of joinery. And I really needed something like this in my workshop. Now I hope this actually gave you some ideas so you can implement something like this in your workshop as well. Now, if you did enjoy today's video, drop me that like button down below. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. There's plenty of cool content coming in the near future. I also got already a massive playlist with absolutely fantastic projects that you can tackle. I've got some really cool playlists just over here for you. So go and have a look, check those videos out, and hopefully I'll see you on those videos there. Take care.